Now let's talk about padding between each UV shell and some of the errors that happen when you don't have enough padding as well as when certain UVs of geometry are connected together along the 90 degree angle like this and see what happens inside your decay. So here I have a simple cube. If we open up the UV editor, we have a light map channel and a regular texturing channel. So switching over to a light map, we can see it is the same as the texturing channel and we have all these pieces of each plane connected together. There is no padding, nothing is separated and let's go ahead and export. So here inside UDK from previous tests that I've done I have a few cubes set up and one is casting the shadow, one is being grounded and we have a few of them stacked together to see how the seams happen between each and every single box. So let's go ahead and open the content browser. Here I have cube one. So let's go ahead and re-import and let's build lighting. So here we are and we can see some problems are with some of these boxes. We can see that we have some shadow bleeding right here and along this edge. We have some bleeds right here. So there's some problems with these static meshes with the light maps themselves. And here we have boxes that should have no seam in between, yet we have some bleeding that happens along one of the UV edges and it's causing a seam problem here. And if we'll take a look at the back, we have the same problem. So we need to fix this, meaning that we would need to separate some of those UV islands to be in their own unique space and not connected along the edge where shadow would turn and change. So let's go back to Maya and let's fix this. So I have another cube. I'm going to move this out of the way. And in this cube, I have the issues fixed. So let's take a look at the UV layout. We have the same texturing UV layout. Nothing has been changed here. And for light map, and here I took every single plane and I separated the UV edges and I made them to take up their own unique space and there was enough padding in between each to allow the light and the shadow not to bleed onto each other from one UV shell onto another. So padding is very important between each UV shell. You want to give enough space usually between two to four pixels. So let's go ahead and take this and let's export it and we're going to export it as cube 2. Back in UDK, I have the same kind of boxes set up here. Uh, let's take and duplicate this. And making sure that it's cube 2, and it is. So all these are cube 2, and let's go ahead and re-import. Here's our cube 2. I'm going to click re-import, and now we need to build our lighting. And here we are. If we take a look, we don't have any more problems as we had with the cube one and everything has its own light its own shadow there's no bleeding there's no seam so we take a look at here there's a slight seam here and there's a very slight seam here but once we apply a diffuse texture on top uh, things like that will disappear because we will have some sort of information and not a flat white surface and uh, Things you see right here along the edge and the top, uh, this is ambient occlusion inside UDK. So this is not a bleeding problem. And ambient occlusion helps to ground the objects by giving a slight contact shadow at the bottom, at its corner when it's touching another object. Uh, it adds more realism to the scene. And if we go up to view world properties, let's search for ambient occlusion here. And we can turn ambient occlusion on and off. And we can see that uh, it takes away those contact shadows and brings them back. So going back to Maya, having padding between each shell is very, very important. You want to make sure that you give two to four pixels between each shell. So if we go and if we bring this object closer here and just get a little more compact while still having some space, some padding, you may notice that this padding may not be enough and it will cause 
the light of this shell bleed into the shadow areas of this shell. So let's take a look at what that looks like with very tight padding. Let's go ahead and re-import and build lights. And let's take a look at what that looks like and we can see there's some bleeding that goes down this edge. We go in the back here. We have more pronounced bleeding here along the seam and very bad bleeding that goes on along this edge. A lot of times you can fix this by increasing the resolution of these objects of the light map. And what it will do, it will increase the light map resolution a little higher and gives more padding in between each shell. Uh, but again, the problem with that comes from increasing the texture memory size and the build times for the small object. And the issue is not really fixed. You want to optimize your light maps and your meshes as much as possible without having to resolve to increasing the resolution size and build times. So you, you, you want to be optimizing at its source and not trying to mask the problem. So if we go into the content browser, we go to the cube, we have it set light map resolution at 32. This is 32 by 32 pixels. So in order for us to fix this seam, let's go back to Maya. So right now this is very small, it's not even one pixel. So let's fix this pattern issue by increasing the pattern between each shell and giving enough pixels in between. Now it would help us to have the same amount of pixels match the grid. So right now we have 16 by 16. In UDK, our object is 32 light map resolution. So we want to match it as close as possible. So we want to have 32 by 32. So in order for us to increase and match the grid inside the UV layout, we need to go under View, Grid Options, and we, have, we need to change the grid lines every so many units. Now to get the number to match, so we have 32 by 32, all we need to do is we need to know how many grid line units we want. So we want 32. So we need to take 1 divided by 32. This is the value that we want. I'm going to control C, control V, apply and close. So now we have 32 here by 32. So that means we want 2 pixel padding. So each grid will correspond to 1 pixel. So here we have, we just give enough space by 2 pixels. Here is good. Let's move this down a little bit and this is good. So if we take this now and we export it back to cube 2, back in Maya we re-import and build lighting. And here we gave enough padding and it sort of fixed few issues. We can see it here, you know, we gave enough padding for each shell, yet we still receive this nasty bleeding that happens. And the problem with that is our UV edges do not fall on to actual grid lines and they fall in between pixels. So light mass begins to calculate and fills this area with black but some of our UV edges actually are on the black area and the black around the negative space begins to bleed into our UV shell. So what we need to do is we need to make sure when we receive some of these edges that have bleeds, we need to make sure that these edges are snapped to the grid lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly just snap everything to the grid, making sure that every single one of these edges does not fall on in between pixels. And you will notice that after we position every single UV on the grid line, and let's go ahead and export. Let's go back and we need to re-import this cube. And we're going to build lighting. And here we are. All of our bleeding edges are gone because the pixel edges of the UVs do not fall in between pixels of the light map. 
This seam and bleeding error can become a problem when you have modular pieces that have to come together. And when they do, there's going to be a noticeable seam in between those two meshes. This is really noticeable when you have modular geometry such as buildings, uh, different pieces that come together. And uh, here I created a simple plan to simulate a modular building. So right now, uh, there are no noticeable seams. Everything is nice and clean and it looks like one single surface. But there are actually multiple planes. Now if we go to Maya, here is our plane and if we take a look at the UVs, we have the texture in UV and the light map UV, they're exactly the same and the light map UVs line up right on the grid. So that is what you see here inside UDK. Now let's take this and let's bring it down, let's move it off the grid and let's export this. Re-import and we need to build lighting. And this is what happens when certain edges along the UV layout are not aligned to the grid and the UV edge falls in between the pixels of your light map. So in order for you to avoid these seams on modular geometry or any hard edge geometry, then you make sure that the problem edges that you encounter line up along the edge of the UV. Now let's make sure that I align all the UV edges right on the grid. Now for many organic objects, you may not have to do this. And for a high enough resolution, you may avoid some of those seams but when you create modular geometry uh, you will often notice those bleeding seams and they have to be fixed so now we have aligned everything along the grid lines let's export again re-import and build light and here we are, we're back to our original object and it has a nice smooth surface without any seams or any light and shadow problems. So I hope this tutorial gave you a little more insight on how to fix very common errors in light maps. In the next tutorial we're going to cover resolution for BSP and various resolutions for your static geometry.